Starting the coach setup with the Do you see this? It's a new bench, huh? Yeah. The coach's chat is back and Gail is back in action from the dead. Wow. I know most people can relate. Like a seven to maybe even trailing into 10 to 14 day. Uh, woof. The sicknesses uh, this time of year have been longer. Yeah, everybody's been kind of saying that. But on the men. Mm -hmm. But it seems like the folks that I talk to, everybody's just doing, you know, their own little due diligence and research to like, what can I pump? Like, what can I increase? Is it like vitamin C? Is it more water intake? Is it like prioritizing sleep? You know? Yeah. Maybe this ties into what we're going to open with is, um, so I just traveled, mm -hmm. traveled to, to Texas. And I was very aware, like, when you enter that bubble of, like, you're going to be around a bunch of people. Like, I was so aware I'm in the plane, and I just hear, oh, oh, and I'm like, just all these people coughing. I'm like, I'm in this container. I hope you're covering your mouth, you know. Uh, what can I do? What's in my control that I can uh, help lower or decrease the chances, right? So... It was for me, of course, routine, starting my day with a green drink. I added, uh, I started Z-Cam. Z-Cam? Mm -hmm. Started Z-Cam, I'm just making sure I'm saying that. Or Z-Cam. Z Z-Cam. Okay, yeah. I started that in like two or three incremental doses of like a day mm -hmm. to like load up the zinc as like a preventative. And I also, uh, black seed oil. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, so like that's a, a music Woo! booster. Taste. Not the best, but I would do a tablespoon of that. So like, again, I'm loading this army mm -hmm. up to be like ready. And that was a buffer on the way out. And then when I got there, I also hit up the grocery store and got some like, you know, zinc packs just to just to kind of like, again, decrease my uh, my footprint and, and increase my, my safety there. I was, uh, so what is the combination that we both found out that you can't do? Is it is it zinc and vitamin C together? Um, Man, if you do vitamin C in excess, you will have massive diarrhea. Well, do you remember you told me that like, you were like, don't take it, you gave me zinc, and you were like, don't take it with this because- Magnesium? Gonna, was that magnesium? Mm -hmm. And then one day, I did it, and I was sitting here, and this I This isn't like, a diarrhea one, this no. is a like- Am I going to- Throw up. Vomit. Yeah, like you just, I remember getting like heat wave, like this Woo! crazy sensation. But anyway- I'm uh, gonna switch my couch stretch. So, uh, Sean went to Texas, Went to Texas, what, what which I was do? born in Texas. I know that. Mm -hmm. How how was the weather down there? One nice day and then one really cold day, which really, is interesting. What's cold? cold like fifties? Wind like it was when I got back here. It was warmer here, like forties, oh, wow. like late uh, late uh, Friday or Saturday morning. Oh, it was it was warmer here. And so, what did you do? Yeah, so I went to Texas. Uh, I'm in a uh, a group of um, business owners. So like this is kind of like tier one and um, this I've been in that group for seven years um, you know business mentorship and I'm around the finest gym owners in the space and we connect and we meet up once a year and just we connect uh, on obviously what we're all doing in this space and then there's uh, like the next tier up which is um, a very that group the first group is about 700 members but this next group is like 70 people Wow so it gets very fine-tuned so I recently joined that group and it was like a mastermind meetup and they do these every quarter so this is my first one and um, so I get to connect with high-level uh, gym owners who they're doing uh, and connect with them just on you know what they're doing in their space things that are working well their struggles and also things that they're doing outside of their space whether that's like real estate or um, any Airbnb anything in that space which is really fascinating and inter interesting as well um, so a lot of learning, a lot of growing, a lot of connecting. For me, just literally a lot of listening. You know, a lot of listening and just uh, not getting distracted by anything like any shiny object syndrome and just um, meeting great people, connecting, listening, and learning. Um, and like day one was brought in this tax and wealth strategist, which I thought was really valuable. Um, and the stuff he shared was super illuminating, right? And uh, you know, it, was a, it was a really good time. I was, I'm really excited for... Uh, I felt very humbled to like go into a space and feel like the greenest, newest newbie like at the bottom, and that that's the right room to be in, right? Yeah. Like 
Like if you think about it like fitness, you come in and you have no, no base uh, or you have a very minimal base and you come in and it's like you're in the right room if you know there's fit people who care about you and want to see you kind of progress and get better because uh, it's only going to level you up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, that sounds like so exciting to challenge yourself in new ways. For sure. For sure. And it's cool. Like I like it fits me perfectly where uh, the travel, it's quarterly, so it's spread out enough. It's two days. The, the days are like 8.45 to 3. Ooh. So it's like, great. That's you good get, information. Yeah. So uh, we talked about this a little bit. Like maybe what are, you know, what were some travel tips if you travel or you will travel? I um, thought this could be helpful to share. And then maybe if you have any travel tips of when you travel. Um, some things I did. I, I You know, people can laugh at me on the way out. I will uh, bring food in my bag. So like I'll bring a ton of protein, chicken, like it was like eight ounces and some blueberries and a, a bag of nuts. So I'm not giving in or um, uh, I should say, uh, my, my only options are what's available at the airport, which is usually not great food. So I come and I prepare it that way, got down to Texas, staying on track, great. Uh, working out in movement. I got a lay of the land right away of like, where is the hotel gym? Luckily, it was on my floor and it was about 100 feet down the hall. Nice. Yeah, so I stayed on our timeline, which is only there an hour behind. Mm -hmm. So I just stayed on our timeline. I would wake up and my routine was, okay, I'm gonna wake up, you know, drink some water, take some time for me, and then I'm gonna get in the gym in the next 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Rehab and then just, I changed my style of training. I just did some bodybuilding. I didn't focus too much on, on you know, anything outside of just, I'm gonna move my body here and, and feel good. And I found even like for my shoulder, like cables feel great, which I was like, that's cool. Um, so c c committing to that, recognizing after day one, my brain was shot. I was so overstimulated. I was, I don't want, I didn't want to see another human for the rest of the night at like 3.30 and there was like dinner plans. I'm like, I need to just chill. Um, and, making the best viable choices when it was time to eat. So like, I didn't, I didn't have control of lunch, but I did, I did have control of what I was gonna eat for dinner. So like lunch, example, I mean, the lunch was fantastic. It was uh, catered style, it was okay. And it was done so well, like, which I think if I were to prepare something or, or offer something, it would be like this, like you would go, get your plate, blah, blah, and like, it's like, here are your protein options first. And I was like, great, this is exactly how my brain works. So it's like, cool, chicken, and like, no holds barred. People were being skinny. I'm like, I know I need a lot of protein here, so I took like, I took a lot, and then I the then I realized behind you were like, save some for the rest of. <laughs> and so I did, I did play, I did that, and then I look and I'm like, they had fish, great fish on there. They had rice. I'm like, chicken and rice, this is phenomenal. Uh, so you know, again, contain what you can. Day two, they mixed it up and they offered sandwiches. So I was like, sandwiches. I haven't had a sandwich in forever, but I was like, all right, listen, it's a unique experience. It's a, it's, it's, it's rare. Enjoy the sandwich. You know? Okay, sandwich uh, yeah. I made myself a like a. a oh, you can make one. Yeah, it, it, this is cool. So it was like first it was your bread selection, and they had like five different bread selections. Wow. Then it was your condiment. Then it was I think they had like four different like protein sources. Mm -hmm. Again, stealing them all. <laughs> uh, and then like my sandwich was so big, <laughs> and I had to like cut it down and like just like one bite at a time. It was hilarious. Uh, so and then and then and then I went back up for round two just protein like all right just the deli stuff right like so so i wasn't increasing my carb imprint um you know so just stuff like that i think keeping as much semblance as you can keep moving where you can i hydrated like a, like a mofo people surprised me like how coffee was available throughout this whole thing and like again i mentioned a couple videos ago like i have a hard stop with coffee at like 9 30 so not allowing myself after lunch to have coffee or sweets which are just going to help me tank or maybe make not great decisions so just keeping most of my guardrails in place yeah yeah there, there's a, a I, I was like when you're listening to you there's a couple of things like we go on that family vacation every single year to Rehoboth and mm. I look forward to it all the time because the food down there is just so wonderful are you swatting a fly what are you doing uh there was like a, there's look yeah that's the floating hair I know but they got in my face okay uh the food there is so wonderful so um you know we always we, we go out to dinner you know probably like three or four times. So mm -hmm. I always know that um, I'm going to probably, in, you know, really indulge in the mm -hmm. dinner time. But uh, usually in the morning, like 
for the first couple of years that I used to go down there, I was like, I want to find a CrossFit gym and I want to like keep on going. And unfortunately, you know, having such a high standard and way that we are used to, um, it just wasn't something that I was like, I'm not gonna really like give up my time to drive. And yeah. you know, so it was like, what, what else can I do? Well, they have like a little tiny gym. Um, so me and my mom will go down there and like, you know, we'll do a little something. But the one thing that we, her and I both, and it's like a shared experience is that we get up early, we get up at 7.30, we walk mm -hmm. the boardwalk. They have mm -hmm. like a two mile boardwalk. And it's so cool because there's so many people on there um, of all ages and, you're right on the ocean and the sun is coming up and it's just such a cool experience. And I was like, walking, okay, well that's yeah. what we're gonna do. You know, we're, we walk for about <clears throat> like half an hour to an hour. Um, and then, you know, just being mindful of my choices, like they have a really great breakfast, so I'm like, cool, like eggs every day, a little fruit. Um, lunch is the same thing, so it's, I control those and then, you know, know that guilt-free, I'm gonna enjoy my dinner. Yeah. You know? um, so that's kind of like one place uh, when things are a little bit too much control, I just went to the L2, mm. and that was like, like commercial uh, food chain central. Mm. I, you know, Dirty. I was that. Dirty. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember going down the first time. I was like, I was a little sick, mm. so I didn't do the research that I usually do with like, hey, can I find a Whole Foods or can I find? But it was like Chipotle, Panera. Blah blah blah, and I was like, oh no. Mm -hmm. um, but same thing, like trying to go for <laughs> go for the the best choices there. Um, I do have a funny story about the airport. The one I always bring food or snacks or something that's healthy to go mm -hmm. to an airport because I know that's going to be. But um, an ex uh, partner of mine, Leon, and I got delayed for twelve hours oh. in an airport. I think it was actually almost fourteen hours. Oh man! And with no preparation at all, and had to eat like three meals in an airport, Whoa. and it was not good. And I remember going to, you know, Mexico and like putting on a bathing suit, feeling like absolutely feeling a little bloated. Feeling a little bloated. <laughs> so control what we can control. It's funny too. You mentioned Whole Foods on night two to go back and kind of button up the, the whole trip. Um, was it night two? night two? Yeah, I was there two nights, yeah. Night two, um, it was literally like a 200 foot walk to Whole Foods. Yeah, that's like glorious. It's glorious. So <laughs> I went and I was like, cool, I can control my dinner because the first night I went out, this was a funny experience. I literally walk in the hotel, I meet these people for the first time face to face. They're like, Sean, what's up? Hugs, 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 hugs. Come on, we're going to dinner. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> and uh, now I'm just, I'm the new guy, mm -hmm. one of like 10 new people in this group. And they chose this spot, and it's not a spot I would go. And I had like a, a fish tacos and a burger. Something like, it was a zag for me. So I was like, okay, I wanna control my dinner the next night, right? To the best that I can, because the options were very limited at the spot that they chose. So then night two, I was like, all right, again, overstimulated. I'm kind of, you know, I'm not gonna uh, go out to dinner and more talking and connecting, like I just need to uh, chill. I went to Whole Foods and it was like, cool, what's my protein? And, and they prepare prepared foods too. They do, and the options were a little limited at this oh. Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. So it was like, uh, I found, you know, some shredded chicken and like a hard boiled egg. And I was like, cool, I'm gonna make the most protein I can here. And then I just loaded up on nutrients again. Blueberries, some salad, uh, quinoa was another like protein source that I don't really eat often, but again, I could load it in. Um, shout out to Nina, Nina loves, if she's watching this, she loves quinoa. Um, so just like load this whole thing up to be like a five pound thing and get some water and some like more vitamin C stuff just to like load my, you know, my immune system. So mm -hmm. again, control what you can. What, so going into that, what, and like moving, you said moving is like key. You know, we yeah. had two conversations today. Alex Sotelo uh, front squatted heavy today, and he was like, he's like, all right, well, on my way to uh, Lake Placid now, and you mm. know, it's like four hour drive, and he he's like, I literally have to stop every hour on the hour, get out, stretch, move my body in some yeah. way because I can't. Um, and he was like, I'm gonna, he's like, I'm gonna make my, make the best of that Hampton <laughs> in gym down there, you know, which is great because there's like some free resources out there that can give mm -hmm. you a little like routine. And then even Joni, Joni said the same thing, like either things that you have given her or she's found in our collection of, of like body weight workouts. It's hard to, to um, to stay moving, especially if you, like, if you're used to maybe a cadence of like, intensity is mm -hmm. a part of my workout. I really feel like, at least me, like now at this stage of my life, like I don't really want that when I'm 
away mm -hmm. on a vacation for work. When I was in Florida with Britt, it was, let me try sand running. Mm -hmm. So I, I ran on the beach and that was really hard. Um, or this one was like, I just wanna go in and use these cable machines and body build and get an awesome pump and feel good. Mm -hmm. And literally with my rehab and the bodybuilding, I was out in about 40 minutes, yeah. you know? So yeah, of course, find the thing that allows you to <laughs> stay moving and you wanna stay moving. Mm -hmm. Now the flip of that, which I wanted to kind of point out is, um, we all get gaps from being consistent with fitness to something happens, I'm sick, I travel, whatever gets in the way. And then there's this gap of like not working out. And I shared with you, uh, like Monday, even this small of a gap from working out Saturday and then you know getting back into a rhythm from travel, getting back into like our rhythm here, work out Saturday, Sunday off, uh, Monday, we had a lot of stuff going on, I didn't get to work out Monday, and then just feeling like your my body just feels, it gives me the signs. You know, there's certain things that occur for me that I think, you know, are interesting that our bo like the body communicates, like, you know, certain things start to feel, feel tight, which really is like, I'm craving moving, I'm craving moving in this range and, you know, being loose and open and fluid because that's what you always are asking of me and feels best. And when you sit on a plane for five hours and take that day away from moving and or your cortisol is up on top of all of that, mm -hmm. things just start to not, or maybe even how you slept. So like you slept on your side so your mid back is tight and all these little minutia things like the body starts to give us signs. So, um, one, do you experience things like that too in your gaps of fitness? And then two, maybe like, what are, what do you do? I just experiencing being sick. I didn't work out for probably close to two weeks. And Can we just stamp how the worst, one of the worst things when you're sick is body aches too? Oh my gosh. Whether you worked out like or <laughs> not, just like you're sick, you're at your weakest and you feel your crappiest and then your body just hurts. It's like you hate your body. Yeah. Uh, a little vulnerable share. I'm in this space where we're constantly working on fitness and improving our fitness. And for some reason, me, I have this hard time when I get away from it. It's like I get, I have a hard time getting back into it. I think that's uncommon too, even being a coach. Yeah. Like the momentum, you know, if sure. I stop and I lose consistency or I like lose the time and the time gets away from me, uh, I find myself just like, being like la like lazy about it, you know? For sure. Yeah. What helps you in those times create the momentum again? Yeah, I think it's, there's a couple of things. One is uh, my body talks to me too. You know, I was like, I, I wanna like sweat. I wanna get out of breath. I want my heart rate up. You know, that's something I crave and you know, the feeling after it, those endorphins, like mm -hmm. I was like missing that feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, you know, I can see the changes in my body, which happens to some people maybe more than others, but mm. a change in the body, it's for real. You know, I can see um, the like clothes fitting or just like looking in the mirror and being like, oof, all right, it's, it's time. And then just energy. I'm not, I'm not one to, you know, be a couch potato and like. Do you, I notice this too. I sleep better on days I work out. Oh, absolutely. It's totally sleep better. And then the day, like Monday, not working out, just sharing like, and having a lot of mental, space like I caught myself from like 1 30 to like three o'clock just like <laughs> like brain going versus when you train it's like it's up like that yeah <laughs> you know? so oh, absolutely yeah I, I, and I think maybe another nugget I think at least for me is like do something that's fun but not stressful mm -hmm. so that goes back to the body million thing I'm, I'm away you know, that I got goes back to the walking thing. Walking, exactly. Something for you that you'll enjoy. Oh, the sun, the sunrise, and I'm with my mom, and it's on the beach, and you can take it in and be more present. That's beautiful. Go to a hotel gym and mix up your training and like feel good and time efficient and start your day with something that feels good for you. It doesn't have to be maybe the thing you do regularly, mm -hmm. basketball, CrossFit, powerlifting, like whatever it is. So yeah, that's, that's for your regular just routine. There's always a woman that goes the same week that we go to in Rehoboth. It's the cutest thing. She's got her phone. She'll have her phone um, up and I'll kind of peek at it. There's like this YouTube video and it's like music playing and this person is like, you know, on bench and they're like, okay, mountain climbers, now she's burpees. Along with something. But she's not. <laughs> She's watching. She's, but she's doing her own thing. 
She'll like she has it, and she's just doing her own thing. She'll be like moving him. Maybe it's motivation. Can, exactly. Yeah. Girl is like so you go, girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it too. Speaking of uh, improving yourself, maybe we'll go like tennis here, back mm -hmm. and forth, because there's just not just one. Um, and the door is open for any realm. It can be as can be inconsistent with my fitness to whatever. What are the things that you're actively doing or actively do day to day, week to week that you're really zeroing, zeroing in on to improve yourself as a whole? Abby or the person as a whole or Sean as a whole. Um, and that's not just one thing, mm -hmm. you know, so I'll let you start it off and then take it back to me. And uh, for Professionally, right now, I find for the last several months, especially recovering from a little lower back pain, mm. um, I find myself like very interested in specific uh, information out there, Instagram, YouTube, um, where I just want to find that like little something that's different to help improve myself and then help improve like everybody in here. So whether that be a new stretch, whether that be a new mobility exercise, whether that's just learning a little bit more about how the hips are connected to the pelvis, how it's connected to the lower back. So I want to learn about that more because I feel like once I learn a little bit more about that, I can like it just put more value into my, my job and mm. putting it into myself. Mm. And that's a, I think a, the, the hidden theme within that, unless it's obvious to some, and I view this in everything, you're extracting the gift within the problem. Mm -hmm. The problem or the challenge being I hurt my back and now I'm taking it as an opportunity to learn as much as I can from all open networks um, and utilize that for myself. And that also helps me in my profession with other people who could all, of course, go, go through a similar experience. Absolutely. Cool. Cool. Um, what am I doing to improve myself? Oh, well, this one thing I'll, sh I'll share I'm doing right now is for the, the next five days, this is just interesting. Uh, I'm tracking every, about every 30 minutes um, what I'm doing throughout the day. So it's like I'm calling it like an activity tracker. And professionally, uh, at the end of the week, I'm going to look back and kind of see where my time was spent. Also maybe analyze where maybe some time is wasted and just kind of assess lay of the land. Um, and I'm doing this to kind of fine tune my efficiency, output, effort, and again, learn from that as well. Uh, another is uh, Sean and I, husband Sean and I, um, you know, both busy in our schedules. Uh, but the one thing that I started noticing a lot is that he'll, and I'll, of course I do too, because that might come off a little bit uh, interesting, but he does everything to help me set up for my for my day, for whether it's cooking dinner, or helping me with meal prep, or... Paper! You know, yeah. <laughs> um, and so he's going through some time where his schedule is a little bit busy, and so I'm trying to devote more time to help make him his mm. life easier too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, last night he was like, you know, we're in and out, so some dishes in the kitchen, and so the dishes look like the, or the kitchen looks like the a bomb went off in there, but um, he was like, don't worry about the kitchen, I'll clean up when I, before I go home, and I made it a point, I had like 20 minutes, so it was like like a hurricane trying to get it up, so just little things like that to like not only improve myself, but improve our relationship. I love that, yeah. Before I share one of mine, something that was shared at this mastermind meetup that I love, and you know, you strike me, you guys, is a little bit better at this stuff, that I'd like to, I talked to Bert about this, but just shared this out there for people is, you know, this guy's speaker was like talking about business owners and how you treat your business and, you know, knowing your numbers and X, Y, Z, making this, you know, decisions as an owner versus, you know, something over here and, you know, just the comparison of the two. But then also spun it in a way of like thinking about your relationship and thinking about your relationship of weekly check-ins with each other. Hey, how are you, or where are you at mentally? How's this past week been for you? How am I showing up for you? How can I show up better for you? You know, anything in this realm, and then just listen. And this back and forth of, you know, continually checking in and not letting stuff slip through the cracks or get swept under the rug of like, that could build over time and, and divide. And I thought that was a really healthy perspective on something that maybe in relationship realm doesn't get enough uh, 
guidance or thought out there of like, how can we improve this actively? Because if we're with this person, we're choosing to be with this person, that is the person that we want to be with and we're going to spend a lot of time with. And man, whether it's, uh, how, can we, how can we be best for one another in this relationship? Mm -hmm. you know? um, so another one that I'm uh, working to improve myself is in the morning, and I think this is big for people, I think I've learned a lot of people jump right on their phones. And what I've learned through just research and experience and my own experience too is it makes us very reactive and then it's almost like that door is open the rest of the day to just be very uh, attached to the phone and, and reactive. Where instead of that, okay, waking up, entering the day, checking in, what is, you know, get the coffee, take care of her, um, go to some, some stuff for myself. Might be sitting there and just collecting my breath. I always think of Lodro, like, hey, kind of calm the system down and get clear. And it might be noisy, but just be with it. So trying to do that more than not and not jump right on the phone, right? Also, if there are thoughts illuminating, go right to writing. And that writing is just very freelance, right? What I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, what I need to get out. Or um, it could even be like these reminders to myself of what I'm going to create for the day. Mm -hmm. which I think is intention setting. Um, then I like to read and I'm reading uh, one of the books I'm reading right now, actually probably the, for the third time. This is my favorite book and I almost, for me, it's like my Bible. It's called The Ultimate Coach. So I read this and like I could pick it up and learn something new every time. So much to the point where I just flew to Texas, brought it and like as I'm reading, I, I now go to the back of the book and I just write down like, hey, go to page 282 for this, oh, right? Yeah, like yeah. just because it's every time I'm like, this book is amazing. Um, so, and that's a book about being, and I love that concept of like, what are you or who are you being? I love that mm -hmm. idea. So trying, if I back up, intentionally working more on that being most of my mornings and um, filling my weeks, sometimes I wake up and I just also on the flip will jump right to work. And finding that kind of, gas pedal break sometimes sure. you know so I think the first part is more of what I'm working on and then finding what works really well for mm -hmm. me I think the other thing is just finding time for me I could feel like that too I think um, our job is unique or you know what we do is unique where we have maybe like um, a front-loaded day a little break and then like a back-loaded day and um, I was just expressing to you before like sometimes at night if I'm you know, from four to seven, I'm just interacting mm -hmm. with folks. And what, what a, a weird feeling that I can get is that I can get this like anxious feeling when I, I get text messages like accumulating. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's, you know, then I'm like, okay, I got seven thirty, but I'm not gonna go to the shower. And you know, this, and I gotta make sure that I reach the text messages. I've been trying to do like, okay, I'm gonna read them, but I'm gonna spend some time next, the next day to like go through them and then respond accordingly. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. Same thing, doing a little more like detaching yeah. and not feeling like I have to be on so much, like mm -hmm. take the time off so that I can be 100% when I am on. Yeah, maybe maybe this, I'll share a struggle and maybe there's folks out there that relate to this. I can struggle, especially as a business owner, um, detaching at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm with, most of the time, unless I'm with my girlfriend and her kids or just her in general, that's easier for me. Mm -hmm. But if I'm by myself, it's I have like all right, man. Let's it's, let's stop here and let's uh, start to power down. And there's this thing I'm working through of like, um, you know, just the maybe the you could be doing this, you should be doing that. Did you do this today? Like just all the kind of floating things and being okay, like letting it go. Yeah, and just being like, hey. You did good today, you did a lot today, mm -hmm. you did some good stuff, you got tomorrow coming, like you need to chill, you need to recharge, and maybe we're all working on that in our own way, you know what I'm saying? Oh, for sure. Do you want to talk about, uh, you want to go permission, the permission slip? Uh, you know, all right, let's talk about the permission slip. So this is a good, a, a good reminder for folks out there. Uh, and I'll share this from the perspective of I would imagine for the most part, we're all actively working on improving our selves, health, wellness to some degree, and every, you know, just differing varying degrees. Mm -hmm. 
And in that pursuit, we can really create healthy momentum and feel good. <laughs> and um, there, are, there will be times when we open the door to either old habits, bad habits, or what you could just even consider like a zag. Eating something poorly, whatever that may be. We'll put it in that bucket. Even it could be a different, like the way you treated someone, but we'll live in the eating poorly. You're giving yourself your, the permission slip to do it once, but it's a slippery slope. Do it once, and if it will, you know, the, the bad food, and get back on track. Where I work with some nutrition clients where I will tell them, This is not a permission slip to F off because folks to varying degrees, when they come in for their one month uh, nutrition coaching session, even if they still make progress, oh, I lost body fat, I didn't gain any negative weight and I had two or three meals in there or three days in there, we have to be reminded that, because those connections can kind of mirror up. Ooh, mm -hmm. I can mess off and still make progress or not. It's like, mm -mm. it's a slippery slope of a door. And even someone who I'm working with, he opened a door that he's aware now, it's continued into the next four days of like these little stackings of things where now the willpower is at test. As at test. And, and because this person is not super disciplined and structured and they're building that muscle, it's very easy to give in mm -hmm. and to, the door is just there, it's knocking on you. So being aware when we give ourselves permission to indulge that, enjoy it, embrace it, mm -hmm. but realize and give yourself the acknowledgement that it's not the permission slip to just F off and uh, unravel ourselves and habits. And you can pertain that to you know, anything. Ooh, I looked at an attractive woman passing by. It's like, okay, that's it. You know, like I can appreciate beauty or whatever. Or man, um, I spoke in a way that uh, I know I could be better. It's like, that's not a permission slip to keep doing that. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of, you know, uh, spin it how you like, but mm -hmm. I like that mentality. And I just thought that would be important to share, especially in the realm of nutrition which is such a layered arena. That was the, those are like the lessons, you know, they're, what we just said, the lessons are gifts, you know, when we kind of like take it in and you're like, okay, I learned my, I learned my lesson. I went off track and then I really just like, you know, went off the rails. I learned my lesson on what that could do because the results showed, you know, showed it. Um, For sure. You know, I, I you know, spoke out of character and, that affected this, this, and this, and that's a lesson learned, you know? So taking those as gifts and remembering that we're faced with those all the time that we have to kind of take it and move forward. Yeah, I mean, speaking of like slippery slopes, if you pertain it, let's shift into fitness. And it, this is interesting for people, whatever, whatever you fitness you do, you know, let's talk about um, knocking on a dangerous door. You have, Particular joint limitations. Let's go to the wrist. Your wrists are just not fully full of range. They're they're restricted, and certain positions cause pain or discomfort. And then you're coming into uh, an environment, group class, and we're gonna do front squats. And this position is is just not a great position for you. You can't get here. So it's more elbows down and you can't get the bar on your shoulders because of those wrists. The question becomes, should you even be doing that? Because your body is giving you the signs that it might not be best for you. And it might be better to do a modification. Maybe it's a back squat. Maybe it's a dumbbell front squat. But the trap is, no, I'm just gonna, see how it feels. No, I'm just gonna do it because it's what everybody's doing. It's probably what people tell themselves and they go down this path of making joint tissue worse, and this is an example of wrists, could be shoulders, ankles, back, whatever, at the sake to be like everyone else or not wanting to adjust the movement that their body is better designed to do. And that trapdoor, what I see is like, oh, 
my wrist really hurt. I'm not gonna go to the gym tomorrow. And then you start to slip away from the boat. Mm -hmm. And you see it next week. There's some sort of, some sort of frontal rack position, power cleans or whatever. Oh, I'm not gonna go today. And it just starts to build. And then you just get off track because not the movement, but I was in my way. Mm -hmm. I was in my way, you know? So that's another trap door within fitness. I know, there's another avenue of, if I keep repeatedly do that, it's now all of a sudden my elbow is hurting, and now all of a sudden it, my shoulder yeah, is hurting. Spider webs. Now, yeah, spider Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And I mean, I'm, gu I'm guilty in a way that there are signs, and if you avoid the signs, I just like the body talking to you, I feel like there's going to be an intervention of something at some point, mm -hmm. you know, that discomfort level gets too strong. There's an injury, there's a tweak. So all that to be said, being in, being a coach in the fitness space for 12 years, everyone has something now and then joint related that if we paid better respects to, listen to our bodies a little bit better, ask better questions to ourselves, to coaches, whoever, and chose the path that's best for us and made those tweaks and adjustments, we would be on a much better path that would likely have less irritation, possible risk of injury, or possible injury mm -hmm. that then could take us out of the game, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so. I'll share humbly, learn from my mistakes, don't push yourself to that point, you know? And that's why I was couch stretching. Right, another <laughs> part Another part of it is, if you don't use it in a way, you'll lose it. Mm -hmm. That that classic silly mantra, where we did some team, some coach training yesterday here, and I think we all learned, you, me, and uh, our teammate Aaron, that we're all a little tight in the quads. Granted, we did some heavy lunging uh, that day, and then a few days, you know, four or five days previous, not to say that's a cause, but we just all realized through a particular assessment, me and Aaron, man, we could benefit from couch stretching. And I think you specifically were like the one of the group where it's like, you could absolutely, like, we, were like, we were like, hey, you should do this, you know, three days a week, two minutes. You should be doing this twice a day, every day. Twice a day, every day. Now I'm um, gonna do it. And, um, you know, I think when you get away from, uh, well, if I back up, stretching, isn't the only answer. I think people will get something and they'll go right to stretching. Strengthen creates length. Length is important. We need length of tissue. We need pliable tissues that can allow us to get in positions. And it doesn't have to be for the sake of the gym. It could be, uh, I was talking to a guy on a consult yesterday and he was like, man, I want to be able to get down and you know pick up my kid. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm in a squat right now. And that playing with your with your kid or or even just something like that, the ability to do that and have access to do that or my back. Mm -hmm. And length is a part of that. It's not the only part of that. Mm -hmm. We need to, again, strength train, have a strong core, train the muscles, be balanced, have some conditioning so we don't get tired chasing that little one around or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. So it's multifaceted, but going back to stretching, a little bit goes a long way. Oh, for sure. And that was something this morning that I did. It's funny, coming off of the test, I was like, okay, Sean, you're gonna couch stretch. Did that, did some, some stuff with my shoulders. So I treated myself first mm -hmm. before I went into like anything else. I think, you know, that's important too. Very nice. Yeah. You, uh, the bow, putting the bow on our coaches chat, episode six, seven? Six, seven, I don't, at this point, we're rolling along. Um, Last question, unless you have anything else, is what are you focusing on and or reading right now? <laughs> well, uh, there's one thing that I want to listen to. You might laugh. I told, well, I've told you m numerous times. There's times where I like to like read something that's um, educational, and then there's sometimes that I like to read just for fun. Oh, crime killer serial killer stuff? <laughs> yes. I mean, yes, I love murder stuff and crime, crime junkie stuff. Um, but I had a couple of friends in the gym um, read the Britney Spears mem mem memoir, and I would like, really like to do that. I don't think that's silly. <laughs> so, I think there's stuff to learn everywhere. Well, I'm going on the trip next weekend, so I'm going to get them on audiobooks because I really like to cool. listen. So I'm excited about that. Um, so that's that's always fun. I like just like casual listening because it just helps 
because we were just like oops, 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 oh you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah so sometimes it's just like it's fun to do um to do that but so husband sean is a world war ii um enthusiast like he loves like reading and, and he knows a lot um so i've started like diving in and doing like a re little reading on it and it's so interesting to me we just watched like a charlie chaplin documentary we just watched like all these things that are pertaining to that all right what have you learned what's that what have you learned oh my gosh you're putting me on the spot now i'm gonna take take notes you're snoozing during this. <laughs> no, I'm not. I lived with Abby once, and you put a TV on for 20 minutes, and she's like, "Out, out." Mouth, mouth, Even last night we were watching. Mouth snoring. Sean was like, "I got this great show for you. It's like this murder on a cruise ship," <laughs> and he was like, "It's right up your alley." And he was like, "He had a he had a day yesterday. He's like, I just can't wait to like sit on the couch with you and like watch this with you." And I was like, "Okay." And I remember just I'm sitting there. And I'm like. <laughs> like stay up, Abby. Stay up. Stay up. Stay up. Stay up. And then all of a sudden, I woke up at like ten thirty and went to bed. You're silly. I know. I think you know maybe this is helpful to end, or could be helpful to end. Um, what I'm focusing on is in a realm of like being the best partner I can. But aside from that, um, maybe the sideswipe story this morning. Yeah. Um, in terms of like, okay, shit's gonna happen. Like reacting. Yeah, things are gonna happen. So this morning I was driving in to uh, the gym to perform a one-on-one -on -one session. And on the way in, Mila's in the back, I'm driving um, a 10-wheeler, I didn't know that was such a thing, looked like a cement truck. We're on a two-lane like highway, just merges into my lane, must have been a blind spot, and like sideswipes me, cracks my mirror right off, my front whole panel, and keeps driving away. And, and it's like- Yeah, it. like, hits us like whoosh. she comes flying up into the front i grab her uh it was intense like i hit the brake and luckily you know we're fine so of course first five seconds rage you're like angry <laughs> curse words follow and then um so thought he was gonna stop i was upset that yeah i thought he was gonna stop i was i thought he was going to scout his vehicle we could, you know, exchange information, whatever that is. He just kept going. And so now I'm like, I'm going to follow this guy and get his information because now this is not, this is not okay. So while I'm doing this and I don't advocate texting and driving, I'm, I'm very skilled in this. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, amongst eating and doing these other things you shouldn't do in your drive. I texted JD, a member here who's a, who's a police officer. And I said, Hey, I just got a uh, police really question. Um, and I was like, I just got sideswiped. What do I do? And this guy just didn't stop. And he told me to, he instructed me to call 911 and kind of tell them what was going on. So, okay, went and did that. Talked to them. They were great. Dispatched me to the troopers. I'm still following this guy. So I'm following him, like waiting for the chance to get to a stop sign or red light to get out and to not murder him, but to, hey, you just hit me. Like, let's stop, you know? Meanwhile, before all this, I texted my my client and said, "Hey, uh, let's uh, get to the gym a little early, start warming up. Like, I didn't want it to impede the session. Make sure you do your hip mobility. Like, we are gonna rock and roll from 9:30 to 10." And he was like, "Okay, great." <laughs> so I'm covering all these angles. I am following him, and so I get off the phone with the the, the troopers. Like, all right, we'll send a uh, a trooper to uh, your business. I was like, okay, I'm still following him. My friend JD calls me. And he's actually on duty. I'm like, oh, great. I tell, him, I tell him what's happening. As I'm telling him what's happening, he is getting the dispatch call to come see me, which I thought was hilarious. So uh, he's like, I'll, I'll be at the gym in like 20 minutes. I'm like, great. So I go into the gym. I start my session. Uh, shout out to you as well. During my session, JD comes in to get my information and my license and stuff like that. So Abby seamlessly is like, hey, I'll take over for Peter. She had my plan. So she just... Filtered right in, thank you. Uh, I went over, talked to James, and he. Uh, uh, I realized in that moment, and he did too, after sharing the story, it happened out of his jurisdiction. It happened in Greene County, not Columbia County. So he, unfortunately, was like, hey, here's what you need to do next. And I was like, oh man, dang it. So I was like, okay. So at my thinking, I'm about to take class, take care of myself, uh, 10 to 11. I have a meeting with someone, 11.30 to 12. We're gonna record this. It's just steps. Okay, this isn't life altering. My car's drivable, she's okay, I'm okay. I don't need to make it bigger than this. I don't need to like 
Yeah, XYZ. So um, hop into your class. During your class, we're warming up, the phone rings, so I head over real quick, uh, the, the gym phone. Hello, and it's JD. And JD's like, hey, I tracked down the company, like the information you gave me. It's a local business. And I was like, okay. He's like, they don't want law enforcement involved and all this stuff. They would be happy for you to go there, show them what happened, share the information, and you guys can essentially like settle it up there. And I'm like, great. Thank you so much. This was a huge shout out to JD who on his own did some due diligence for me. Thank you, James. Um, you know, and so hung up with him, very grateful for him. Went and front squatted my tail off. <laughs> uh, had a great time in your class. Did what I need to do, had my meeting. We talked, we had a little meeting. We're, sh we're shooting this, we're finishing here. When I leave here, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna then handle it then. So I think the, the premise, you know, of the whole thing is like, it, stuff's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. um, what do I need to do? What's within my control? Okay, I'm okay, I'm safe, I'm alive. You know, she, she her, okay, great. That is step one, bare bones one. Um, I made the appropriate steps to learn what I needed to do, uh, connected with JD to do that, got the information. Uh, I didn't make it bigger or stress or like consume me. Um, and now I'm gonna take care of it and whatever comes from it is whatever comes from it in terms of uh, I will you know eat that elephant one bite at a time you know but the, we're okay and it's it's a car right so uh, you know hopefully there's things in there that can be extracted for of course. for stuff a like <sighs> yeah yeah voice memo is the key you know I kind of like that you should share that because that's huge like having sort of some sort of you know when you get an idea to voice maybe people already know this but yeah all right maybe this is the so this will be the, the very the very end here is I've been big lately into opening my notes section if I get an idea or whatever I'm doing you know maybe I don't want to be texting and, and this is actually the case for the license plate thing is I was voice texting it so I would speak it and my phone would just you know say what I'm saying so I share with you candidly, it was like, so I hit hit the voice thing to get ready to record, and I'm like, I'm gonna get you, you mother ever. Like, like not realizing, and then like, license plate, T, so like I look back down, and it's like, I'm gonna get you mother, and I'm like, <laughs> delete that, right, get all the information. Uh, on a side, away from this. I really wish I could see you in that <laughs> Away from this, uh, I'll use it for like blogging, like I'll get an idea in the morning, I'm like, cool, here's a concept, and I'll just start talking through it, and then I get this meat of something, and then I put it in my, my computer, and then I just edit it and trim it. Or stuff with the team, like I'm like, hey, here, you know, just had this console, here's the download of the individual, and I share it. And I think that's a really helpful way to take, save time, and to like hear the voice too, mm -hmm. where it's, if, if needed, like person to person, or take something big like a blog or a concept, and then just get out your initial thoughts, brain dump it, and then come back to it to, to edit and trim it, you know? Take that tool, y'all. Tool, many tools. So, uh, coach chat. Back. Never, we're not really sure. But we'll Six or seven, <laughs> and now it's time to wake up Rosie and go get the car situation resolved. Yay. Be well, my friends. Are you ready? Do we go, <coughs> do we go home? Do we go home? Who that? Who that? Did you have a good nap? Did you have a good nap? Yeah. You were out, mama. Sweet. Okay. I love when they shake their little head.